Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order. This is Tuesday, March 26th. This is the village board meeting. We'd all stand. We'll have Trustee Neiman lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Costa. Present. Trustee DeVivo. Present. Trustee Kajanis. Present. Trustee Nemec. Present. Trustee Sabo. Present. Trustee Yukic. Present. Mayor Daly. Present. Are there any amendments to the agenda? Okay. This would be E1. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of February 12th, 2013 meeting? So moved. First by Trustee Costa. Second. Second by Trustee Yukich. Is there any discussion? All, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries. E2. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of March 12th, 2013 meeting? So moved. First by Trustee Yukich. Second. Second by Trustee DeVivo. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries. Is there a motion to approve the accounts payable for the period of February 28th to March 27th, 2013? So moved. First by Trustee DeVivo. Second. Second by Trustee Costa. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Costa? Aye. Trustee DeVivo? Aye. Trustee Kajanis? Aye. Trustee Nemec? Aye. Trustee Sable? Aye. Trustee Yukich? Aye. Motion carries. The next por uh, portion of this meeting is reports and communications from the mayor and other officers. I want to thank staff members Ka Cameron Davis, Heather Kokodinsky, and John Robinson for organizing a, ter a terrific community recycling event this past Saturday. It's my understanding that nearly 650 cars participated in, the, in this free paper shredding and electronic recycling event sponsored by the village. I would also like to thank the following groups for volunteering. The Lockport Township High School's ladies junior and varsity soccer teams, members from the LTA, LTHS Interact Club, as well as Frank Gonzalez and a hardworking crew of Boy Scouts. Several staff members, the Village's Emergency Management, along with Trustee Costa, Yukich, and Kay Janis, volunteered to help make our second shredding electronic recycling event a huge success under stargazing at the Trantina Farm. Join us on f a Friday, April 12th from 8 to 10 p.m. for stargazing at Homer Township's Trantina Farm, located on 151 151st Street, just east of Galger Road. Large telescopes brought to the site by volunteers from neighboring astronomy clubs will be available for free public viewing of the night sky. The event is a, is a cooperative project with the Village of Homer Glen, Homer Township, and the Homer Glen's EMA. Early voting. Early voting is now taking place in the Village of Homer Glen's boardroom from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. No early voting will occur on Good Friday, March 29th. Yesterday, March 25th, five residents voted here at the Village Hall. I encourage everyone to take advantage of early voting. The last day to early vote is Friday, April 5th. As many of you know, this meeting is one of Trustee uh, Nemec's last Village Board meetings. I have worked as an elected official alongside Trustee Nemec since 27, uh, 2007. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you, Mary, for all of your hard work and dedication to the Village since its inception. I wish you the best of luck with all of your future endeavors. Earlier this evening, we had a, re a reception in her honor. I was happy to present Trustee Nemec with the key to the village for her service to the residents of Homer Glen. Now let's continue on with the uh, reports from the trustees. Trustee Costa? Yes, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I'd like to report uh, on our upcoming community fest. Our fest is scheduled for, um, I'm sorry, I was almost said March, but June th uh, 20th through the 23rd. 
Um, we do have our band set now. So on Thursday night, Pink Freud will be uh, performing. Friday night, we have two bands, starting off with 80s Enough and then Infinity. On Saturday, we have three bands, Fortunate Sons, uh, American English, and K.O. Bossy. On Sunday, two bands, McKenna Hartland and Hillbilly Rockstars. Um, also, we have a beanbag tournament, as we did last year. It will be Friday evening starting at 6 p.m. and also on Saturday at 1 p.m. Um, this year, each player needs to have a valid Illinois or Indiana, uh, Indiana ID. Uh, last year, we had players come from, I think, as far out as Ohio and that, so this year, we're, it's pretty much Illinois and Indiana. The uh, registration for the beanbags will be open for uh, uh, until the end of the first round on the first day. Then after that, the registration will be closed. Um, also, our parade, let's not forget, on Saturday morning, uh, the 22nd, we have our parade again, uh, pretty much the same route as we've had for a number of years. The lineup will begin at 10 o'clock with the parade kicking off on 11. The actual par uh, parade route is from uh, Park, uh, 151st and Parker, down just north of uh, Culver Park. So if you have a uh, organization or group that would like to participate and walk in the parade, uh, or even just a group of neighbors from your, uh, from your neighborhood or your subdivision, uh, you can call the township office. Uh, the applications will be coming out uh, very shortly if they're not out right now. But the township uh, office is uh, 301-0522. Also, as in all events, we're also looking, uh, continually looking for volunteers. So anybody that would like to uh, spend four days or some hours with us at the uh, fest, we can certainly use the volunteers. And it's a perfect time for your high school students that need your community service to come out and put some good quality hours given back to the community. And that is my report. Thank you, Trustee Casa. Tr uh, Trustee Jukic. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, on mine, goes along with the Fest 2. We're trying something new this year. We're not absolutely sure we're going to be able to accomplish it, but we're going to try it. Uh, the Highway Commissioner has always had the dream of having a gigantic fireworks display tied in with music. It's a little bit more money than we want to spend, so now we're looking for people who want to try to contribute money and more or less promote their business. So uh, if anyone is interested, contact Mike DeVivo at the highway department. He can explain everything to you. It's going to be called Magic Skies. They're going to move the uh, agenda over to the golf course if we could work this out with the music. Other than that, that's it for the festival. I also wanted to thank the staff for the event that we had Saturday. They did an absolutely wonderful job. Every person that came in there on the left said that it ran so smooth they couldn't believe that this was a village event. The government never gets anything right, and we did. So again, thank you very much to the staff. And the last thing is, Mary, we all love you. We're going to miss you to death. So the best, like the mayor said, everything's going to be great. And I thank you very much. That's my report, Mayor. Okay, thank you, Trustee Ukich. Trustee Sable. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm reporting for the Environment Committee, and the first topic is another event, Earth Day Arbor Day. Plans for Earth Day Arbor Day on May 18th at the Conell Farm include many returning participants, entertainment, exciting new additions, and activities for children. The Environment Committee is seeking crafters who recycle and or reuse um, natural items in their work. Also encourage our children's activities and environmentally friendly solutions. And people who educate others on pres preserving our natural resources. The entertainment schedule includes cold-blooded creatures, Big Run Wolf Ranch, and both of these um, performances are very, very popular. The new entertainment edition will feature the program about incredible bats. And the incredible bat people will be there all day in, in addition to their um, scheduled performance. If you go to www.earthdayarborday.info and down, you can download an application. The site is very informative, featuring activities from 2012. Any sponsors of the event will be, will be featured in all publicity and on the website. Sponsors are very much appreciated as they help us bring more and interesting activities to this family event. We also need volunteers, adults, and students. The lighting ordinance. The lighting meeting scheduled for May 21st with the CED committee and the environment committee was canceled due to conflicting schedules. 
The combined committee um, has made progress in recommending amendments and are looking forward to scheduling the next meeting. The day may be confirmed for Thursday, April 11th as the next meeting. Arbor Day is coming up next month. The Environment Committee is planning for Arbor Day, which is celebrated on the last Friday in April. This year it's April 26th. A location is being sought for the planting of a native tree, which is native to our area. And we welcome any ideas for public places to consider on where to plant the tree and have the celebration. We have planted on uh, public places on several, several times, uh, schools, township, healing garden, so we're looking for another site that we have not, where we have not planted a tree. The mayor has talked about stargazing, and of course this is our fifth year for stargazing. We're very happy and pleased that we have the three um, amateur astronomer groups, um, Kankakee uh, area, starga uh, stargazers, and the um, uh, Na from Naperville, and also Southwest group. They have been very dedicated um, in coming. And uh, we have appreciated in the past the services of Homer Glen EMA. They do a fine job and um, during the event. And uh, they will be able to assist us on April 12th again. Again, the public is invited to attend. School children are truly amazed at what they see through these lenses. And Mary, I want to thank you for your dedication, your effort, and your ability to stick to the principles on, on which we incorporated this village. It's a challenge, but uh, you have been very strong and a good leader. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Sable. Trustee K. Janis? Yes, Ms. Mayor, thank you. <coughs> I'd like to uh, report uh, Homer Glen businesses in, uh, once again, come forward. One business this last weekend did a superb job coming forward and pulling resources together for a charity and or organization. Pelican Harry's this past Saturday, it was their second annual St. Baldrick's fundraiser where even the owner participated, the owners participated by shaving their heads, raising money and awareness for research <coughs> for kids with cancer. This came about several years ago when one of our own in Homer Glen had cancer as a, as a young infant and came forward as a, as a teenager and asked for help. And Pelican Harry stepped to the plate. Again, this is just a great sign of our community that our business community is giving back to these various organizations. So hats off to Pelican Harry's this past weekend. Great job. Regarding the lighting, uh, yes, uh, we're making progress with the community economic development team on our subcommittee with the environmental team. This started several months ago. I'm happy to report that we have made great progress on several, several topics when it comes to our lighting ordinance. There is still a couple topics we still need to go through and get some recognition on. We look forward to working with the environmental team. Our mission with the CED committee is very, very simple. <clears throat> we don't believe in heavy-handed government. We do believe in good governments, governance, excuse me, in the practice of working in partnership, not only with our business community, our entrepreneurs that choose Homer Glen as their business location, but also all our residents, that we all could benefit from good governance. With a couple subjects to go, I'm looking forward to working with Margaret Sabo, or Trustee Sable, excuse me, and the environmental uh, team. We look forward to the meeting, hopefully next month, and we can work towards lessening the burden, lessening the burden on our businesses and our residents. With that said, I'd also like to wish Mary the best. 
and also thank her for all her dedicated service that she's given to this village. It's also been a very much a pleasure, Mary, sitting next to you for these two years and having conversations and topics and insight on our conversation. Wish you the best and I look forward to seeing you on various other topics in our community. Thank you, Trustee K. Janis. Trustee Nemec? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, a quick note of uh, business. The Sewer and Water Task Force uh, is on the calendar to meet on Monday, May, uh, April 22nd. That meeting is going to be moved to April 8th. Uh, there will be a special notice uh, sent out. So um, in uh, two weeks, uh, the Monday, April 8th, uh, Sewer and Water Task Force. All right. 7 p.m. Thank you. And uh, I, I want to take a moment to, uh, again, thank uh, Mayor Daly, who uh, I, I do really appreciate um, the reception that you requested uh, be given today. Uh, it meant a great deal, and I do appreciate that. I appreciate the, um, the establishment of the key to the village. I never thought I'd get a key to a village before, but wow, <laughs> so cool. Uh, I really appreciate that. Um, and it has been, too, my pleasure to serve with this board. Um, you all have been uh, absolutely terrific, uh, great colleagues, um, and uh, um, it's hard. It's going to be very, very hard to miss it. And um, to the residents, um, it has been an honor, an honor uh, to be able to serve. And uh, I, I got much more out of it than I gave, I can tell you that. So thank you. Thank you, Trustee Nemec. Trustee DeVivo. Thank you, Mayor. At the Parks and Rec meeting last night, uh, we reviewed and came to a consensus on the style of benches for our trail system. And this should be on the April 10th meeting for the board uh, to vote on. We also discussed the next project for the Parks and Rec Committee, and we will focus on trail connections for future grant applications. Um, I'd also like to thank Mary. We've, we've worked for years since the incorporation, and you know it's 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 going to be different. Sad <laughs> that you're not going to be here. Uh, you have always been a very grounded. Uh, elected official uh, thought things through thought the process through didn't vote with your two, two emotions but you know there might have been a few so but we were really going to miss you thank, thank you, you for all your work mayor thank you thank you trustee de uh does the treasurer have a report yes mayor i have the treasurer's report of cash and investments for february 28 2013 it's the 10th month of fiscal year 2013 the general fund had cash and investment balances at February 28, totaling $6,825,739.69. The motor fuel tax fund had a cash and investment balance of $1,612,612.69. The land acquisition fund had a cash and investment balance of $1,240,904.18. The park fund had a cash and investment balance of $826,874.51. And the last fund, the capital project fund, had a cash and investment balance of $22,984,957.12. And I would also like to thank Mary. Uh, she's been an outstanding advocate for good, sound financial policies, and I really re appreciate it and respect it over the years. And I will also miss you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you, John. Does the clerk have a report? Uh, Mr. Mayor, first of all, I want to thank you for reporting on early voting. But I did want to mention one thing. Saying that we had five yesterday is the truth. <coughs> um, and it sounds kind of pathetic, really. But I just want to point out that it is spring break. It is Easter week. So if you are planning on voting early, come in tomorrow and Thursday <coughs> because next week will be very, very busy. I just wanted to point that out. Okay, thank you. Does the village attorney have a report? I have no report, ma'am. How about any task force chairpersons? How about any public safety officials? Joe? How about the village manager? Thank you, Mayor. I do, uh, Mayor and Board. Uh, first of all, we'll start out and just um, thank uh, the staff, and uh, including all the EMA uh, volunteers. 
uh, for the very successful event this past Saturday. I was going to let uh, Heather Pokenency report um, on the success of the event in terms of the amounts collected and things of that nature. So Heather, if you could. Heather was our project manager. Uh, she's done it two years in a row. So uh, even though there are a lot of people involved in it, um, the success of the organization of the event is due to her work. So. Thank you. You, um, you want I, to pull that mic? In? I just wanted to um, uh, thank all of the elected officials that were able to come out and participate and also to volunteer. Um, the volunteerism that was shown at this event was tremendous. We couldn't have gotten through the 630 cars that pulled um, up to the event and dropped off uh, two and a half truckloads of electronics and we um, shredded almost two full uh, trucks of paper and I, I just think that <coughs> with it being a free event and it's a, it's a tremendous opportunity for the residents of this village and I appreciate everybody that took part in it and um, I would also like to say that um, I hope that it's something that we can continue to do for the residents in the future so thank you and I would also like to say Mary it's been wonderful to work with you and um, I appreciate your leadership and I wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. Does the village manager have any? I do. Else? Just a couple other items, Mayor, real quick. Um, the uh, You'll see in my report this week that we also got some email thank yous from residents. Um, one uh, resident from Orland Park who said that it was such a nice event, they're looking forward to moving into our town. So you'll see that, <laughs> you'll see that in my report this week. Um, also, the uh, John and I are, John Sawyer and I are finishing up the proposed 2013-2014 budget, and that will actually be out to the village board next week in preparation for my presentation to the board on the budget on the 10th, or our presentation on the 10th. And then, of course, you're going to be acting on it later in the month in April, so you'll have the budget, uh, the proposed budget, a full month in advance. Um, after you get the budget, if you want to sit down and chat about it, of course, John and I are always available either together or individually, however the schedules work out that way. Um, I think you'll be very happy with the budget. It's a good budget. It's a good, solid budget. Um, also, my final uh, comment, uh, well, I want to say thank you to Mary, too. Uh, my first week here, Mary and I had an opportunity to sit down and have uh, lunch together. And we talked about all the things that um, we would hopefully be accomplishing uh, over, I guess, the coming months and year ahead. And we got through a lot of those things. Some things we're still working on. But it's been a pleasure serving with you. So you are uh, officially my 41st uh, village trustee <laughs> in the course of my career. I've been keeping track. Uh, it's been a pleasure, a pleasure working with you. So thank you so much. Um, finally, I just want to ask if I could, uh, Elena to come up and Aaron, we'll get you on camera. Aaron, you get up and Heather too. So, uh, <laughs> the girls and me. Um, we're, so, uh, the girls and me. Um, so we have a staff uh, award that I give out quarterly, or trying to out quarterly. And these three all are getting it this quarter for different reasons, and I want to tell uh, the public why. So we have a staff member who had to take some time off, uh, and, and Elena helped to fill in, everybody helped to fill in. It was an extended period of time. Everybody helped to fill in, but Elena already does a couple jobs for the village, and then she had the added pressure of doing all that good work, which she handled beautifully, and I appreciate it. And that was in the first quarter. And tonight, the board, this uh, hopefully, is approving the master plan for parks and recreation. That's what it's like. And um, Aaron was the project manager on that. And if we would have gone out and sought a consultant to help us with that, it probably would have cost us $25,000, dollars $40,000. So the ABCD award, above and beyond the Call of Duty, you know, uh, Aaron really uh, has done great work on that master plan for the park and recreation. Thing. So that happened in this first quarter too. And Heather, this is the second year, of course, that she's been managing this electronic recycling program and paper shredding program, which is more complicated than you might think. And we get more compliments on than anything. The cars just came through one after another compliment. And she helps to make that all just uh, work beautifully. So the three of them get a $50 gift certificate that I purchased for, from a uh, Homer Glen business. And I uh, just want to say thank you to the three of you for your good work. Okay? Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Mayor, that's the end of my report. Thank you. Okay. The next portion of this meeting would be public comment. Joe, do we have anybody?
Okay, the first uh, first speaker would be, I believe it's Laura Euler. Take the mic and uh, your name and address for the record. Laura Euler, 16741 Brentwood Court in Homer Glen. Um, first of all, thank you, Trustee Nemec. Uh, as a resident, I just wanted to thank you for your service to our community. Thank you very much. Um, also tonight, I just wanted to speak and publicly uh, commend the Public Safety Committee for um, finally addressing the health hazards associated with the widespread <coughs> leaf burning done in the village. Um, there's a lot of health hazards. I've done a lot of research and, you know, finally someone is looking into this to protect the residents. So, um, you know, of course I'm in favor of a complete ban on leaf burning, but um, I do support the um, proposal that they're now discussing, which would restrict it to only, uh, would, would ban burning on lots under three acres. Um, so I wanted to say I support that as well. Just wanted to thank you. That's all. Thank you. Okay, the next speaker would be uh, Bob Schmidt. Oh, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, two things. I want to thank the lovely lady for coming out and letting you know that the public safety is interested in everybody's safety in our town. Uh, not just these things. We are addressing a lot of issues, and I'm very proud of us, finally. Uh, now, that is to the important issue. First of all, the important issue is marriage. Um, we've known each other a long time. I may not have agreed with you all the time, but I love the way you send your ground, and even though you might have been wrong in my opinion, I love you for saying it and for hanging in there. You have represented our town admirably. Uh, and I would hope that in the future, your successes will be numbered in the multitude. I really mean that. That's, that's coming for me. And, uh, Oh well, that's enough. I'm going to start up here. Okay. Uh, now, may I go on? Sure. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, as you know, uh, I have been an opponent of the uh, Illinois Department of Transportation and their <coughs> plan for the raised million <coughs> on the 159th Street. <coughs> I realize that some time ago, the mayor and uh, some of our board members had gone to visit INOT way up north. And we were advised at that time that they were going to do that. So it should not come as a surprise that they are proceeding in that endeavor. The reason I mention this is that I'm not going to stop fighting it. I believe that what will be good for Homer Glenn for now, I don't think about 20 years from now. I know some of you do. You look <laughs> way down the road what Homer Glenn will be. Well, I know with your help, Homer Glenn will be in a place where people want to live and will want to grow their businesses here. But an unbottomable median on 159th Street, in my opinion, is catastrophic to business development. If you cannot turn into a store without going to a turnaround, whatever that may be, I have requested information from my net showing the number of accidents and the number of fatalities when they use a turnaround. <coughs> Believe it or not, they've never done a study. At least that's what they tell me. But you and I both know <coughs> that 169th Street, this time, of 355. 
Okay. Uh, two more water move faster. Last but not least, having a sidewalk entry from my front window, that's unacceptable. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Bob. Okay, that concludes public comment. The uh, next portion of this meeting are um, legislation and action items. I one. Is there a motion? Is there a motion to uh, approve resolution number one three dash zero zero six, a resolution adopting the updated twenty thirteen Village of Homer Glen Parks and Recreation Master Plan. So moved. First by Trustee DeVivo. Second. Second by Trustee K. Janis. Uh, is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee DeVivo? Aye. Trustee K. Janis? Aye. Trustee Nemec? Aye. Trustee Sable? Aye. Trustee Yukich? Aye. Trustee Foster? Aye. Okay. Motion carries. I two. Is there a motion to approve ordinance number one three? Dash 014, an ordinance declaring surplus property. So moved. First by Trustee DeVivo. Second. Second by Trustee Sabo. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. I, I, I'd like. Trustee Sabo, go I'm ahead. Sorry. Um, I'd like a little uh, explanation um, for the audience's uh, purpose to hear this. I, these funds are, an establishment of these funds are very important. And um, there are three of them, and um, I, I would just like some elaboration. Uh, would the village manager well, like I, you to? You know what? I'm sorry. He's in the wrong. You're in the wrong one. We're on this one. The dog messed up my uh, pile of papers. <laughs> 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 Uh, okay, that okay. was good. I, I was, I was that was good. <laughs> an articulate elaboration of why you want to get rid of junk property. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry. Okay, well, you know, is there any further discussion? <laughs> well, there are things that have been so serious, mm -hmm. you know. We have to. <laughs> okay, uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee K. Janis? Aye. Trustee Nemec? Aye. Trustee Sabo? Aye. Trustee Yukic? Aye. Trustee Costa? Aye. Trustee DeVivo. Aye. Motion carries. Is there a motion? To, this would be uh, I-3. Is there a motion to I-3, Margaret? I-3. You know, I'm going to ask the village manager to put in the corner here in very large letters, <laughs> I-3, I-4, whatever the agenda is. We would be happy to do that. <laughs> happy to. Is there a motion to approve resolution number 13-005, a resolution authorizing execution of a two-year consulting agreement between the Village of Homer Glen and John Sawyers, as recommended by Mayor Jim Daly. So moved. First by Trustee, nope. who is that, Jukic? No, second Trustee by, Nemec. It's first by Trustee Nemec, second by Trustee Jukic. Yes. Is there any discussion? <coughs> I'd just like to say before we vote, John, you've done an excellent job. You absolutely deserve an extension on your contract, and uh, I look forward to working with you. Thank you, Mayor. I, I appreciate it. I, I uh, work as hard as I can. I, I enjoy it a lot. So thank you very much. Fantastic. Trustee Nemec? Um, I, it, thank you for letting me make that motion. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I really appreciate being the opportunity to do that for the last time. Um, we have walked a little bit down memory lane today mm -hmm. with um, mm -hmm. Uh, when you first came in and we had no money and no way of getting it and uh, John worked miracles and, and kept us floating so um, John I'm really I feel very good knowing that you're still going to be part of the uh, administrative team on this village well thank you thank you very much thanks okay is there any further discussion madam clerk please call the roll trustee Nemec Aye. Trustee Sabo? Aye. Trustee Yukic? Aye. Trustee Costa? Aye. Trustee DeVivo? Aye. Trustee K. Janis? Aye. Motion carries. This would be I-4. Is there a motion to approve the revised mayor and village board standard operating procedure, SOP number two, the village's accounting fund guidelines, adding a special events fund, environmental fund, and a debt service fund? I'd like to make that motion. First by Trustee Sabo. Second. <laughs> Second by Trustee Costa. Is there any discussion? Mayor, why don't I give you a little explanation okay. of those funds? 
This is the one, Margaret. <laughs> this is deja vu. Well, better yet, I'm going to have John do it because he just got a new contract. So go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, th this, in my opinion, is a improvement to the accounting guidelines for uh, fund reporting in that it, it now takes um, the special events and the environmental funds, which currently are reported in the general fund, and uh, it allows for those fund activities to have a continuous life, because in the past, at the end of the fiscal year, they would zero out and we would have to rebudget them. Um, that still will need to be done, but any surpluses from those activities will now be reserved in the general fund and we'll be able to keep track of, of, uh, of the performance of those events. So, um, so fund 12 would be the special event fund and uh, it, it will ultimately roll back into the general fund on the audit report, um, but it will be accounted for in a separate fund and we'll be able to, to um, always show the perpetual performance of it. The, uh, the, uh, ongoing performances of, of the multiple events. Same thing with Fund 14, which is the environmental fund, same concept. Um, uh, and then the third fund is the debt service fund, and that's per the bond ordinance, and that's where we will account for the home rule sales tax and the payment of bond interest and principal. Uh, so if you have any, any other questions on it, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, it follows the same format as, as of uh, the current SOP number two, and uh, it gets reviewed annually, uh, presented to the board for, for review on an annual basis. Thank you, John. And one thing I just wanted to additionally mention, at the committee, um, there was actually an addition to uh, Fund 14, and that I think Heather had uh, put this on your table earlier, that just the red words and watershed initiatives under the environmental fund. That, that was accidentally left off. So that's part of your motion here to make. My, my uh, I guess the, uh, it, this is similar to what we did with the tollway fund, which is how we kind of advance funded it by, by restricting the fund balance. That's what this, uh, these two new funds will do, very similar to the way the tollway fund was reserved in the capital project fund. Okay. Thank you, John. Is there yeah. any further discussion? Trustee Yukich? Thank you, Mayor. I just had one question on the, on the uh, performances. Suggested maximum fund balance for the special events fund would be 60000 What we originally planned with the event committee is to get it to the point where we did not have to use any village money whatsoever so we could basically eliminate what we had borrowed from the village so we didn't have to worry about paying it back. We would be self-funded. And once we got to the point where we had additional money to somehow fund things that needed to be done in the village or someone who needed something in the village. Well, I, I think this kind of achieves, achieves that. Uh, if, you had, if you had 60, I think the expense budget right now is around 80. That's if nothing, if, that's if the fest didn't create any revenues at all. So if the special event fund had a fund balance of 60,000 to start the year, theoretically, or, or quite possibly, it would be self-sufficient at that point. Uh, you could review it annually and see if, if that's reality or not, but, but if, if it had 60 grand to start the year, you know, um, um, because right now we're, the budget is gonna mirror the committee budgets for the special events. It's gonna show pro, uh, estimated proceeds from the events and estimated expenses from the events and estimated surplus or, or deficit. So really that's the number you need to cover. And uh, you know, typically, you know, conservatively it should, weather permitting, it should break even. We've done very well in the past. For, yeah. That's a key word, weather well, Absolutely. Because if the weather is atrocious for that weekend, we still owe everybody that comes in or that sure. fund could disappear down to 10, 15,000 if and we that, had and a very that, bad weekend. And that's why it's nice for it to accumulate balances so right. that you can absorb that and know that it was there. It's an easy number to measure against. Uh, you could say, well, we had 60 grand in here because we've had good years and then we had a bad year and it's, we knocked it down by 10 or 20 or, or whatever. But um, it's just, uh, it's a starting point. Right. And it is John, a starting point. And as John said, one of the great things about these SOPs is you definitively have to look at them annually. Yeah. So a after the next festival happens, we'll take a look at it, and maybe we make some adjustments, maybe we don't. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yep. The other thing, uh, George, uh, I remember you guys were looking into insurance against the weather. Yeah. Uh, so that's not cost effective. The only one who wins there <laughs> is the insurance company. 
you, well, you have to hit it to the minute. Yeah, it's 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 an option. I remember talking oh, yeah, about it though. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Any further discussion? Yes, I, I'd like to Trustee mention Sable. Uh, about the environment fund. I'm glad this is being set up. It uh, helps us so watch where uh, expenses um, are are going and uh, what has been contributed. Um, to the environment, it's uh, it's an easy way to keep track of this, and the dollar surcharge um, that residents pay, um, uh, along with their uh, garbage uh, uh, expense cost, is valuable to uh, put back into uh, a fund like this, and to be utilized for the purpose of which it was created. Okay. Any further discussion, Madam Clerk? Please call the roll. Trustee Sabo? Aye. Trustee Yukich? Aye. Trustee Costa? Aye. Trustee DeVivo? Aye. Trustee Kijanis? Aye. Trustee Neiman? Aye. Motion carries. Let's see here. Is there a motion to approve the attached proclamation declaring April 26, 2013 as Arbor Day in the village of Homer Glen? So moved. First by who is that? Aye. Trustee Costa? Second. Second by Trustee Sabo. Is there any discussion? Yes, I would like to of the mayor to read the proclamation. It's not a long one, but it is so Did profound. You have the proclamation? <laughs> okay, proclamation declaring Arbor Day in the village of Homer Glen, April 26, 2013. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas the holiday called for Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. And whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world. <coughs> and whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, lower our heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife, and whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products, and whereas trees in our village increase property values, enhance the economic viability, vitality of the business areas, and beautify our community, and whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. <coughs> Now, therefore, I, Mayor Jim Daly, do, do hereby proclaim April 26, 2013, as Arbor Day in the village of Homer Glen, and do hereby urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect our trees and to plant and care for the trees to promote the well being of this and future generations. Approved, well, we we're going to approve it, approve this, this 26th day of March 2013. That is the proclamation. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Yukich? Aye. Trustee Costa? Aye. Trustee DeVivo? Aye. Trustee Kajanis? Aye. Trustee Nemec? Aye. Trustee Sabo? Aye. Okay, motion carries. The, um, this would be I-6. Is there a motion, is there a motion to approve ordinance number 13-015 an ordinance amending ordinance number 12-035 amending the benefits <laughs> section of the personnel policy statement for the village of Homer Glen. It is understood that the total number of observed floating holidays for full-time exempt level staff members as so designated by the village manager would increase from three to four days. All full-time non-exempt level staff members will continue to observe three paid floating holidays per calendar year. So moved. First by Trustee DeVivo. Second. Second by Trustee K. Janis. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Costa? Aye. Trustee DeVivo? Aye. Trustee K. Janis? Aye. Trustee Nemec? Aye. Trustee Sabo? Aye. Trustee Yukich? Aye. Motion carries. This would be I-7. Is there a motion to authorize the village president mayor to execute the grant agreement with the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus for the Illinois Technical Assistance Grant Stem by Stem Tree Inventory. It is understood that this grant requires a matching fund of $22,000 and $5,000 worth of in-kind contributions from volunteers and service providers. I so move. 
First by Trustee Sabo. Second. Second by Trustee DeVivo. Is there any discussion? No, just say that you will, um, you'll notice that obviously the, the financials of this, both the grant coming in and the expense side of it in the proposed budget that you'll be receiving here within a week. Okay, any further discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee DeVivo. Aye. Trustee Kajanis. Aye. Trustee Nemec. Aye. Trustee Sabo. Aye. Trustee Yukic. Aye. Trustee Costa. Aye. Motion carries. This would be uh, I-8. Is there a motion to approve the attached mayor and village board standard operating procedure number nine, a policy of guiding the village organization, organization <coughs> regarding the acceptance of special event festival sponsorships, financial and in kind? So moved. First by Trustee K. Janice. Second. Second by Trustee DeVivo. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee K. Janis. Aye. Trustee Nemec. Aye. Trustee Sabo. Aye. Trustee Yukic. Aye. Trustee Costa. Aye. Trustee DeVivo. Aye. Motion carries. This would be I-9. Is there a motion to direct the village president mayor to respond to IDOT's request for direction by notifying IDOT that the village of Homer Glen would like phase two design on the 159th Street improvement project to include an asphalt multi-use path, Heroes Trail, on the north side of 159th Street in Homer Glen, and a cement sidewalk on the south side of 159th Street in Homer Glen. It is understood that this does not commit the village to paying 20% of the path and the sidewalk improvements at this point, but does provide direction to IDOT for <laughs> phase two design and cost estimate purposes. So moved. First by Trustee DeVivo. Second. Second. Second by Trustee Nemec. Any discussion? Mayor, just, just for the record, if I could, I, I wanted to make it just crystal clear on what this, this is, because I know this is an important item um, for the board. So after, uh, what, what IDOT really needs is they need direction from you so that they can do the engineering and prepare the engineering <coughs> so that the project can be bid out. <coughs> so that they can get cost estimates, and then after they do that, then they come back to the village board and they say, okay, this is how much your 20% will be. And it might be that it absolutely matches the 20% estimate that they've given us, or it might be lower, or it might be higher. At that point, that's when the village board will have to sign an agreement with them to commit to paying for it. So your action tonight, while it doesn't commit you to a path or a sidewalk, a sidewalk on the south side or a path on the north side. If you make this decision tonight, you can't put a path on the south side, okay? You, you're giving them the direction on what they need to design and cost out. So you would have, this is why I'm mentioning it. Staff is suggesting a sidewalk on the south side. Um, as I say in the backup, it's cheaper than a path. It's skinnier than a path. And we do have a couple areas on the south side that have very tight um, parameters in terms of width, so it will be helpful that way. Instead of a 10-foot wide path, there'll be a five-foot wide sidewalk. And um, staff really feels that we don't need a Heroes Trail path on both sides of 159th. That's what we feel kind of in our heart. The Heroes Trail path is gonna be coming down, as you guys know, right from over here by the senior housing, straight down south on the ComEd line and is going to actually meet up with whatever is installed on the north side of the road. So it'll be path right into path and then there would be si there would be a sidewalk on the south side if the staff if the board goes along with staff's recommendation. So I just want to make it real clear. You can certainly back out of it later, but you you won't be able to say a year from now, okay, wait, we changed our mind. We want a path on both sides. So I just wanted to make that real clear. Okay. Um, now, the final thing I just mentioned the sidewalk, you know, we're only going to have to pay, if we decide to go forward with both of them at a later date when they give you the cost estimates, we're only paying for 20%. So this is like getting the absolute best grant we could ever get from anybody for these projects. One way of looking at that sidewalk on the south side is if we move forward with this, you're actually getting a half a million dollar grant uh, to put that sidewalk in. If we had to pay for it ourselves, it would cost that half a million plus our, what, 126000 or whatever it is. So you'd be spending $600,000, $650,000 to put that sidewalk if we paid for all of it. So you're getting like a half million dollar grant, which is outstanding. Um, so hopefully that 
made it clear we'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Okay, is there any further discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Nemec? Aye. Trustee Sabo? Aye. Trustee Yukich? Aye. Trustee Pasco? Aye. Trustee DeVivo? Aye. Trustee Tijanis? Aye. Motion carries. This would be I-10. I've been advised by the attorney, attorney. He would like to see this item tabled. He needs to look at a couple items in it to clarify them. Uh, can, can I get a motion to table I-10? So moved. First by Trustee Costa. Second. Second by Trustee Jukic. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. No, uh, item 10 is uh, tabled for further review by the village attorney. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor, any questions that we may have or clarifications you want us to run it through a village manager to get Please. to legal? Okay. Please. Thanks. Um, okay, that concludes uh, our legislative and action items for the night. Uh, the next portion of this meeting is a workshop. Um, discuss, uh, let's see here. The, um, there's no motion needed in this one. This is discussion regarding community and economic development committee's recommendations regarding secondary signage. Go right ahead. Very good. Thank you, Mary. Uh, this is actually pretty exciting because um, certainly the uh, Community and Economic Development Committee has been working on this, but we've also talked about it on the board level. We've talked about secondary signage uh, as we've talked about signage over this past year. And so a lot of time has been spent on, on this particular item by staff and by the committee. And now it's gotten to the point where the committee is, uh, and the staff are bringing forth a recommendation. What um, I just always want to uh, remind everybody how this kind of works. After um, we have this presentation tonight and you have some questions and we fine tune it if we need to, et cetera, um, then it actually has to appear, the recommendation from committee has to appear on a future village board meeting. And what we would be doing is we'd be petitioning the plan commission to act on the recommendation and to review it and to further review it and then come forward to the board with a recommendation of their own that could either mirror the petition that we give them or could potentially uh, have some changes to it. So that's what we're uh, discussing tonight. Erin's going to walk you through. She's got some great slides to show you that will tell the tale and then we'll take some questions after. So. I'm really excited to have the PowerPoint back on tonight after last time. So um, the first thing I want to go over is um, what exactly is a secondary sign? So I have an example here of a building in um, Homer Glen Crossings, which is on, Bell, on the east side of Bell Road, north of 143rd Street. And you've got your signs here on the front elevation of the building facing out on Bell Road. Um, and then you also have signs on the back elevation of the building facing um, east. And so those, that would be your secondary sign. Um, currently, wall signs in the village are regulated by um, size and not number. A business is given an allowance for how much uh, signage size they can have. Um, and that size is based on the frontage of the building. And to measure your uh, building size, or to measure the size, you would um, measure the linear length of the outside building wall facing the street or in the case of a multi-tenant building like this you want to measure the length of the wall facing the parking area so in this example which is artistic dentistry one of our new businesses in the bell road plaza we would measure along the building wall which is represented by that that red arrow and we have 20 feet we take our building frontage, which is that 20 feet, we multiply it by 1.25, and we come up with a 25 square foot, which is our total sign allowance. So this is an aerial of where that business is located. And again, since we don't regulate by, by number of signs, they could use that sign allowance and break it up into two and they could put a 12 foot square foot size sign on the front of the building and a 12 square foot sign on the back of the building. But like most businesses, they're not gonna do that. They're gonna max out that sign and put it the total square footage, the 25 square foot on the front of the building. <coughs> so recently the village has been seeing a lot of inquiries from um, 
businesses coming in wanting a second sign on their on their business. And most of these uh, inquiries have come from single user buildings and multi-tenant buildings on a corner lot, corner, uni corner units in multi-tenant buildings, and multi-tenant buildings with rear access drives, like the building we're in right now. However, if these buildings have maxed out their sign allowance on their front elevation, like most businesses do, staff is unable to give them um, an over-the-counter permit and we have to encourage them to apply for a variance so the community uh, community and economic development committee tried to work on the ordinance and see if we could get some sort of alternative to just a variance option so as part of that research we took a look at 10 local communities and surveyed their ordinances and what we found was eight out of those 10 communities that's 80 percent um, allowed a secondary sign one community did not allow the use of a secondary sign in one community which is woodridge regulated by size not number which is similar to the approach that we use here at homer glenn um, this is the language that's in our current uh, sign ordinance the total gross surface area of all wall signs shall not exceed the number of lineal feet of building frontage as defined which is measuring the length of the building wall either facing the parking lot or the street no more than 30% of any window may be covered by a wall sign. And then a bonus of 25% in total sign size may be granted to a wall sign that is not a box or a tray, but is constructed entirely of individually mounted letters or geometric shapes. This um, Community and Economic Development Committee has come up with a recommendation. And so I'm going to kind of go through those recommendations and show you how that would work on some of our current businesses. The recommendation allows for one wall sign to be permitted per building elevation immediately adjacent to or on a public right-of-way or major privately owned circulation road. One wall sign can also be added on a building elevation that is immediately adjacent to off-street parking. And then we allow for a maximum of two, or we're recommending a maximum of two uh, wall signs per business establishment. So here's an example of the building that's um, near Home Depot. We're going to take a look at ATI Physical Therapy, which is one of our newer businesses. Uh, the address is 14035 South Bell Road. Um, Bell Road is highlighted here in red. And then they also have this privately owned circulation road, which is in yellow. Here's their existing signage on the front of the building. And they're a corner unit, and then they're surrounded by that off-street parking. So on the current recommendation that we have, they would be allowed to place signage, um, there's that privately owned circulation road, they'd be allowed to pay, place signage on the rear of the building or on the side of the building, but not in both recommend, not in both locations. And they'd be able to place it on the rear because that's adjacent to the privately owned circulation road or the side because that's adjacent to the parking. But again, only on one, um, either or, since they already have it on the front. A second example would be, this is one of the uh, Dominic's outlots with the Dairy Queen and the Currency Exchange. This one's a little different than our previous example because there's no uh, road behind it. It's just a parking lot. You have Bell Road highlighted here in red. This is their existing uh, <coughs> signage, which is all on the front elevation of the building facing out towards Bell Road. Uh, based on this uh, CD, recommendation they would be allowed signage on the side of the building and the rear elevations of the building because of those are all adjacent to off-street parking so people coming out of Dominic's and all those stores would be able to see the signage on the back and sides of the building but again this is an either or if you have a sign on the front of the building you could have it on the back or the side but not both Continuing on with our recommendation, um, wall signs would not be permitted to be located on a build, building elevation which is immediately adjacent to residentially zoned property. And then on a multi-tenant building, the center line of a wall sign must be placed so it shares a common horizontal center line along a building facade. And that's just for uniformity so you don't have signs popping up all along uh, the building facade. Um, this part didn't change much from the original language of the wall sign ordinance. Um, no, we're still recommending that no more than 30% of any window may be covered by a wall sign. Size-wise, the total gross surface 
the total gross square footage of one wall sign shall not exceed 1.25 times the number of lineal feet of building frontage as defined herein. The size of the second wall sign shall not exceed 75% of the permitted size of the first wall sign. Where it changes a little bit is on a corner lot. We're still recommending that one wall sign be permitted per building elevation. Maximum of two wall signs. Wall signs are, permit, are not permitted to be located on uh, building elevation, which is immediately adjacent to residentially zoned property. Where it changes here is in the size. Instead of being um, allowed to be 1.25 times the lineal frontage of the building, we're only allowing it to be the same size as the building frontage. And this is for a situation on a corner lot, you view it a little bit differently. Um, the signs would have to be the same size because when you're looking at them, you see them at the same time. So we don't want one size that's one sign that's bigger than the other one right next to each other. And then the final recommendation is a language clarification. Um, our ordinance only allows uh, channel letter signs currently. Box signs are not permitted. Um, and this, the language change makes it very clear that those box signs aren't permitted, like the one shown below. And the individual letter, uh, channel letter signs are the only ones permitted. And that's all. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you, Aaron. <coughs> nice, nice presentation. Uh, We've, we've discussed this a little bit before, not only at committee level, but as trustees, that uh, there's quite a few situations in town where you're looking at the back of a building, and unless you're really familiar and you're, you're from this area and you know the sign that's on the, on the other side of the building, you don't really know what's there. You, you could be shopping Home Depot and looking at the back of the building, and you have no idea what, what's there if you're not from Homer Glen. I think it's a great idea. Um, uh, I know um, Trustee Kay Janice's uh, uh, committee worked on it hard and uh, uh, open it up for any questions for Aaron or discussion. Just, just, a, quick, just a quick comment. Uh, you know, I do think this is a great idea. Uh, one of the things that, that just makes me nuts is when I do go shopping and I can't find the building. A perfect example is on Bell Road, UPS. You have to drive in there in the back, but the buildings kind of all look the same from the back. So you're not sure where to pull in, and it's it, right. this will help an awful lot. So right. thank you for all your hard work on this. Right, and Mayor, I just say too that we know that we've had a couple inquiries already from businesses along there. Um, Meyer will have between 10 and 15,000 customers a week. That's what their customer counts are. And so uh, it'll become even more of, of, of an issue trying to drive business to the adjoining uh, parcels for people that are parking at Home Depot and Meyer and wanting to see those those businesses want to go use them. It, it, it's definitely a pro-business, you know, uh, uh, program here. I believe to Trustee K. Janice, you want to say something? Yes, if I may, Mr. Mayor. Sure. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank um, not only the CED for uh, several, several months of working on this, but also Aaron with their patience with our CED with questions and asking for more research and more feedback uh, month after month after month. I think the end product is um, solid. I agree with uh, Trustee um, um, DeVivo when it, it could drive you crazy when you can't see the building but you know it's somewhere in that vicinity and you pull into the wrong parking lot. Happens to me uh, over at the Home Depot um, uh, shopping center quite a bit. We also understand that a, drive, a major driving factor behind any business is signage. We understand that uh, you know impulse shopping is a major component on, depending on the type of business. It could be anywhere from 20% on up to 40 plus percent on impulse. And that impulse is you see the sign, you recognize the sign, and you go, aha, uh -huh, that's where that business is located. I'll remember that next time I wanna go shopping. That's a key component to heavy users in keeping our business here in Homer Glen, to let our residents and the traffic on the streets understand how to get to the business with ease. So with that in mind, I um, look forward to um, uh, seeing what the Planning Commission has to say on this, and hopefully we move it forward. 
let's not keep, let's not put our businesses on the back burner. Okay. Is there any further discussion on this? All right. Then that would conclude our workshop item for tonight. It, the next item would be: Is there any old business? Okay. Is there any new business? Okay. Then I would. Uh, next item is executive session. Is there? A motion to go into executive session for the purposes of discussing executive session minutes and employment performance and compensation. Mayor, I'm sorry. All you need to go into tonight is just four minutes. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So then the motion would be to go into executive session for the purposes of discussing, discussing executive session minutes. So moved. First by <laughs> Trustee DeVivo. Second. Second by Trustee Sabo. All in favor say aye. Aye. All, all opposed say nay. Okay, we're going to go into executive session. We'll be back after that. <laughs>